of water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Until the birds pledge your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness.
And I will bring praise. I will bring praise. No weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice. I will be blessed. God is my victory. in the battle when triumph is still on its way I am a conqueror and go well with life so firm on its promise I stand and I will bring praise I will bring praise no weapon formed against Amen. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory and He is here. All of my life, in every season, you are still God, and I have a reason to against me shall remain. I will rejoice. I will defend. God is my victory as he is here. And I will bring praise. I will bring praise. No weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice. I will declare God is my victory and He is here. This is my prayer in the harvest when favor and providence To be emptied again, the seed I've received, I will sow. And Lord, we love crying out to you, Lord. That God, when we're in the desert, when we're in the fire, Lord, when we're in the battle and the struggles of this life, Lord, that you are there and that you are triumphant, Lord, that you've already won. God, in that we can rest in you, and we will bring you praise, Lord. We will praise you. We know that there's nothing that we can do without you, God. Lord, I pray that this morning, here in this place, even now, God, Lord, we have come to meet with you. We've come to hear from you and to worship you, God, and we want nothing to be in the way of that. So anything that we need to get rid of, Lord, I pray that, God, that we would give it to you, Lord, that we'd turn it over to you, God, that we'd give all of ourselves, Lord, and hold nothing back. Lord, hear our praise this morning and be honored in it. In your name, amen. You may be seated. Mercy, mercy, bring me to my knees. 
as the morning calls to light the dark in me. Heaven's story, breathing life into my bones. Spirit lives this wasteland now I find my life in you my eyes on you
worship you. I worship you. But you are a maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are a maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. Worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, never stop working You never stop, never stop working The way maker, miracle worker Promise keep light in the darkness My God, that is who you are but you are way maker, miracle worker Promise keep light in the darkness My God that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you Washed away in your blood Too much to make sense of it all I know that your love breaks my fall The scandal of grace You died in my place And my soul will live No to be Jesus, there's no one beside you. Forever the hope in my heart. Death, where is your sting? The powers as dead as my sin. The cross has taught me to. 
for us, Lord, is just overwhelming. How much you care about us. Lord, you demonstrated it. You went to a cross. You were murdered for us. You loved us that much. Lord, all these songs this morning, how you just want to be a part of our lives. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Mm. Lord, to worship you is just a wonderful thing, God. And Lord, this morning I pray that you'd continue to draw us closer to yourself. Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes and open our hearts, open our minds to your great love for us, God. You love us so much. I, I pray that we would grab a hold of that this morning, God. And that, Lord, we would run with it, Lord, when we leave. With your love, with your grace, with your mercy. Desiring to live lives, God, pleasing to you in all that we do, God. We need your help today. We need your help today, Lord. Today is all we have. We're not promised tomorrow. So, Lord, today, speak to us. Empower us, God. Give us understanding, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Good to see everybody. <clears throat> if you're wondering why my voice sounds so weird, it's because I'm weird. <clears throat> I have been sick for the last two days, and so yesterday I told my wife, I said, I'm going down to urgent care, and I'm going to see if I'm COVID positive. Yes. Yes. The swabs went in. I've been dreading it for a long time. But when, I, when she finished with the second nostril, I looked over at my wife and my eyes were just water just pouring out. And she was laughing. I said, you're laughing. <laughs> she goes, oh my gosh. So I'm COVID negative. So yes. 
And so the doc said, you have severe, severe allergies. So I said, okay, cool. <laughs> Dayquil. Antihistamines. So I got to speak at a level this morning that is not me at all. Because usually, you know, I'm, spe I'm like all over the place. Like, ah, I can't today. Or I'll start coughing profusively. So I have to stay at this level. <laughs> now that's going to be hard <laughs> for me. Those of you that know me know that I, because I, I, if I get too high, I'll, I'll start coughing. But anyway. And yes, I'm drinking tea. Not by choice. <laughs> but anyway. We got a, a really wonderful thank you card from the... Um, Foley Elementary School um, to our congregation, to y'all, um, with all the wonderful uh, food. We, we sent cases and cases of bagged apples, cases and cases and cases of, of sweet potatoes. Um, we had cases and cases and cases of sugar pops. We had cases and cases and cases of individually packed, packaged rice. And we got it all to the school before... Um, they went out for break, and so all the kids went home um, with all these all these wonderful supplies. And so the school um, sent a thank you. And the they she wrote. She said, Pastor Joe, I've learned that you served in Bay St. Louis uh, after Hurricane Katrina. It's been Foley's good fortune to benefit from you knowing the ropes of, on disaster relief. Those who worked. Um, with you here to supply food to our families um, probably know far too much themselves about the hurricanes and the hardships faced uh, once they're blown away. Foley Elementary, Foley Elementary will remember Calvary Chapel's generous gift that helps so many kids. Thank you for caring about us and our babies. That's you guys. That's Calvary Chapel Foley. That's you guys. So um, I share that with you. So God is doing a great work. In our community, we have a team coming today um, from our home church, uh, Calvary Chapel, Reno Valley. So they're going to be here to, uh, for a week. And, um, and I'm running the construction crew. I have no idea why. Uh, so we're going to fix a fence. Tomorrow, we're going to fix a fence for an 85-year-old lady. And um, so pray for me. Uh, fixing fences, yes. I know how to do that. I think. But anyway, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah, we'll know. Yeah, I, I got a team coming. They, they obviously have to know how to fix a fence. So. But anyway, um, God's so good. God's so good. The guy, the whoever showed up at the church yesterday, um, God bless y'all. I mean, the church property looks fabulous, amazing. Um, we're, we're ready for our harvest festival, the 31st. Um, we have plenty of cars. I haven't looked in the candy box lately. Um, see how much candy. But you can bring candy all week. You can bring candy that night. And the more candy, the better. Um, we, we bought a banner. We put it out on the church property. So that's ready to go. So uh, October 31st, um, our Harvest Festival. We're going to have a hayride going to the back of the property and coming. Um, so that's in place. So everybody's been working really, really hard. Um, some guys were working at the inside of the church building last uh, yesterday, um, and so they put a couple of they put another floor in the bathroom. So we're just you know we're we're getting there, working hard. Um, we'll get there in God's timing. So, uh, and God's timing is always perfect, right? His ways are always the best, and His timing is always perfect. He's never He's never too late, and He's never early. So, um, I, I love that about Him. So anyway, let's open our Bibles to 1 John chapter 5 this morning as we close this letter out and move to 2 John next week. I'll read verses uh, 16 to the end and then we'll pray over them. Who needs a Bible? Anybody need a Bible? We have Bibles if you need one. Okay. All right, verse 16. If anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, 
he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is sin not leading to death. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, And we are in him who is true, in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And little children, keep yourselves from idols. Father, we thank you, God, so much for your word. Lord, it's a it truly is a guide, a light unto our path. Lord leads us in the way of righteousness for your name's sake. Father, your word keeps us, Lord, uh, just out of the miry clay, God. It, it, if, we, if we just read it and, and, and comprehend it and, and meditate on it and chew on it and devour it, God, Father, it, it truly makes a huge difference in our lives. And so, Lord, would you show us that this morning and that you would just give us insight into these passages of Scripture, God. There's some um, interesting verses in our passage of Scripture this morning. So, Lord, give us insight by the power of your Holy Spirit this morning. And we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John closes this letter out um, with a reminder to us about sin. And who we are in Christ. I I, I like that. Um, I I like to flip it around, though. I like to be reminded of who I am in Christ. I don't really want to be reminded about my sin. (laughs) But the reality is, is we all sin. We all have issues. We all have things that we're working through, we're dealing with. But it's always good to know that who we are in Christ, that way we are encouraged as we walk in this world and in this life and we have an enemy that's after us um the devil's after us the world's after us and our flesh would love to take us out at the same time so a lot of times when people think about sin what is the definition of sin you know you look in the dictionary what is the definition of sin and here john gives us a perfect definition of sin In verse 17, he says, all unrighteousness is sin. If you're looking for a perfect definition for sin, it's right here in your Bibles. Underline it, I did. All unrighteousness is sin. Which means that everything that God calls unrighteous is sin. Hold on to that, folks. I'm telling you right now. Hold on to that. Everything that God says that is unrighteous is sin. There's no no getting away from that. There's no pulling away from that. There's no... You can try to explain it away. You can try to say, oh, this book was written so long ago. It's not even relevant for today. Wrong. (laughs) It's the Word of God. It doesn't change. We don't have the, I guess as Christians, we don't have the the privilege or the the, the ability to determine on our own what is righteous and what is unrighteous. We we can determine what we're going to choose to do. (laughs) We can choose to do what is right. We can choose to do what is wrong. But for us, we cannot make the determination that, oh, that's righteous and that's unrighteous. God is our measuring stick. God's word is what we determine what is righteous and what is unrighteous. Have to. And that's what John's saying here. Um, what God calls sin 
is sin. What God calls what is good and righteous is what is good and righteous. What God the Father said and what God the Father did in His Word is righteous. What God the Son said and what God the Son did in His Word is righteous. Right? And what God the Holy Spirit said and what God the Holy Spirit did in His Word is righteous as well. And, and we are to obey these things. What we have in our hands this morning, I don't know if you know how valuable it is. I, I don't. I only know for myself that we have the complete written word of God. We have the complete written word of God. And it is completely and totally accurate and applicable for us today. <laughs> Even though it was written thousands upon thousands of years ago. And not only did it apply to them then, it applies to us today. And before we get into this issue of sin and sin leading to death and all that, I think I, think I want to, we'll have a better understanding of that once we go through what really the Word of God is all about. Jesus said of this book, Jesus said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Jesus Christ, it is written of him in the volume of this book. All that he is, all that he, God's will for him, everything that he was to do is written in the volume of this book. We have it right here in front of us. To do God's will. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 119.11, he said, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So here we have God's word that we read, that we digest, that we meditate on, so that way we don't sin against God. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture, all is all, right? <laughs> all is all. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So the word of God, it, it, it's God breathed. It's God breathed into man who wrote this book and, they, and men wrote down what God told them to write. It was breathed into them. For, for, our, for, so, for our teaching, for our education, for our reproof, for our correction. And so that way for the training in righteousness. That we, know, that we will know what God wants for us. We know how God wants us to live. We know what God has for us in his word. His word is very important. Isaiah wrote in chapter 40 verse 8. Isaiah said the grass withers the flower fades but the word of god will stand forever what we have in our hands is is living proof because the reason why they called it the dark ages is because they burned all the bibles they took the bibles out of the people's hands they got rid of the bibles and they, they, that's why it's called the dark ages they tried to destroy the word of god they tried to get rid of the word of god well guess what didn't work, did it? <laughs> Here we have the Word of God right, right before our eyes today. Because God's Word is going to stand forever. You, you're not going to be able to get rid of it. Those who, you, you talk about the missionaries in third world countries, and, and they, they don't have Bibles, and they don't have this. And, and, but you know what? They'll, they'll, they'll have a Bible, and what they'll do is, and this is true story. Um, you can read it about it, Voices of the Martyrs and all that. Let's say they only had the Gospel of John. Well, they would tear out one page and give it to one person. They'd tear out another page, give it to another person. Tear out another page, give it to another person. So that way, the Word of God, they all had 
pieces of the word of God and they would memorize it and they would read it and, and, and then they would come together and, and, and talk about the word of God. They'd exchange papers. I mean, that's how precious and valuable the word of God to have it in the hands of the people. Um, the word of God will last forever. The flowers and the grass, they're all going to fade away, but God's word's going to last forever and ever. Uh, Paul wrote in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, and he wrote, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. Yeah, we're going through the Old Testament on Wednesday night. We're, we're, we're going through it. And we're seeing some pretty serious things. What God says about sin and in, in the book of Ezekiel. I mean, some serious stuff. Because God is serious about sin. He really is. We have the Old Testament as an instruction to, for us. So we can look at it and go, wow, God really, he got upset. You know, with, with, with the people's sin. We have God's word. The things that were written for our instruction in the former days. It was written for us. So we would learn from it. Amazing. That we might have hope. That we might have hope. Everybody's looking for hope today. But they're find, trying to find their hope in so many other things. I, I, I am just saddened. Um... When I look at the news and I see the Pope, who millions of people are following the Pope. And he, he's going against the word of God. Millions of people. He's leading against the word of God. That saddens my heart. To think about that. We are to love all people, absolutely. And we want all people in the church, absolutely. Absolutely. And God loves them too. But God does not love somebody and ignore the sin. That, that's not how God works. He loves them so much that he's not going to leave them in their sin. Because God does not like sin. But now you have a, a, a world leader who says it's okay. And then, you, then we wonder why the church is the way it is today. The church is a mess. The Christian church, all church. I mean, the word of God isn't being taught. We don't want to upset the people. We don't, we don't, want, to, we don't want, to, we want to make them happy. We want to entertain them. We, you, know, they're, they're, you know, maybe we should serve popcorn. You know, um, it, it's sad. The word of God is to give us the instructions that we need for life so we can have hope. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. The word of God is so sharp that it, it has the ability, you know, Alan's dad is a meat cutter. He's a butcher. So me and him, we were, we were tracking for service. Because the word of God is so sharp. When you're a meat cutter, you got to cut around the bones, cut around the nerves, cut around the fat, cut around this, cut around that. Getting rid of all this junk, nonsense, cut it off, fat, that, all this stuff, bones, whatever. Throw it away until you have this really nice piece of meat that's ready to go on the grill. Right? The, the word of God is, is so sharp that it's no wonder the enemy doesn't want you to read it. It's no wonder you don't, you, oh, I, I, I don't have time to read the Bible. I got to get up early. I got to go, I got to go to work. I got to, I stay up late. I got to, you know, on and on and on the excuses go. Because the word of God, if you're trying to figure out your life right now and where you're headed and where you're going and what this life is all about, well, you, you, you need to get into this book. And then you're going to find out because this book cuts through all your nonsense. God's word 
cuts through all your facade. The, God's word cuts through, well, I know, but I like this, but I like that. But I, I don't want to give up that, but I don't want to give up this. And I'm, oh, I like this, and I like that. Righteousness, unrighteousness, doing bad, doing evil, whatever the case may be. I like, to, I like to indulge in this sin. I like to indulge in that sin. You know, the word of God, you start reading the word of God, and it's going to start cutting through you, body, soul, spirit, joints, and marrow. That's how sharp it is. All of a sudden, you start, you know, you start reading this word, and all of a sudden, your life changes. <laughs> Things change big time. Big time. I mean, I've been there, done that kind of a thing. You know what I mean? You, 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 you've been at the bottom of the barrel, and, and, and all of a sudden, Jesus comes and he rescues you. But it takes time to get out of that barrel. It, time, it takes time to climb up that ladder to get out of that hole of sin that you've dug for 35 years. It takes time to get out of that hole. But you know what? You keep reading and you keep worshiping and you keep surrendering your life to the Lord and you keep being dependent on the Holy Spirit and I will tell you what, your life will change and, and everything around you is going to change. Guaranteed. The Word of God is living and active. It's alive. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 21 says, No prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. No prophecy in this book was by the will of man or produced by the will of man. It was given by God, by God alone. Psalm 119, verse 105 your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You're wondering, you can't figure out where you're going? You don't know where you're going? You know, you know, you, well, first of all, you know, when you're in the dark, you need a flashlight. <laughs> Especially if there's no moon or anything else, the stars, cloudy day or whatever. Or you're out in the woods. Be, go out in the woods one day without a flashlight. See how dark it is around here. It's dark. You're going to get lost. You need a flashlight, Right? God's word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. It's going to show you the way. That's pretty powerful. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God which is at work in you. Paul was writing to the Thessalonians when they went and they preached the gospel message and they shared the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That they just didn't take it as words from men. They, they accepted it as words from God. And it changed their lives. And it was now it's working in them, changing them. Powerful stuff. Now you go back to the Old Testament. And you go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. And here God's giving the commandments to Moses. And God says, for this commandment that I command you today, listen to this, is not too hard for you. Neither is it far off. It's not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us? That we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea and for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart so that you can do it. From the very beginning, it was all about relationship, folks. From the very beginning, it was all about your relationship with God. Back in when Moses gave the commandments, I love you. I, I have, I, what I have for you is good. What I want to do with you is good. You know, here's, here's my commandments. This is how you're going to live. This is what's going to prosper your life. This is what's going to be good. It, it, it's, it's not so far away in heaven that somebody's got to go get my word and bring it to you. It's not across the sea that somebody's got to get in a boat and go get it and bring it to you. No, it's right there. It's near to you. You know it. Did you feel it in worship this morning? Did you feel it in worship this morning when you were singing the songs? Did you feel how near God was to you when we were singing those songs? How many of you were singing the Waymaker? You know what? You don't know how this is all going to turn out. You're going through something horrific in your life. But God has said to you in that, in that time that, you know what? God's going to make a way. Somehow, some way, He's going to make a way. He's going to make it work. It might not happen today, it might not happen tomorrow, but, you know, keep the faith. 
The word is near to you. It's, it's, it's in your mouth. It's in your heart. It's the relationship. I love you, Lord. I love you, God. I'm going to serve you the rest of my life. I don't need drugs. I don't need alcohol. I don't need stupidness in my life. I don't need to live that way. Why do I want to do that? Deuteronomy 6.6. 6, and these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. The, the God-given responsibility of the elder, of the parents, to pass down the things of God to their children. Automatic. Now, there was about a hundred more scriptures I could have shared with you about the word of God. Um, but my point is this. Everything we need to do life and to do it well, to know what is right, to know what is wrong, what is biblical and what is not, what is sin and what is not sin, we have God's word to lead us and direct us. You don't need me. You need your Bible. You don't need the Pope. You need your Bible. You, you, you don't need the church. You have your Bible. I'm just saying. We, we, we go to church so we can learn. That's where we're supposed to un understand God's word. We worship together. We, we, we pray together. We, we cry together. We grieve together. We laugh together. We eat together. The church is a very, very intricate part of the Christian life. We need brothers and sisters in Christ that we can wrap, lock arms with, that we can, we can do God's work with. The church is very important. But when we change it into something else, then it's, it's useless. It's worthless. John says here, John says here, if anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, then he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. And there is a sin leading to death. John, John is talking to brothers here. He's talking to those who are saved. He, he's, he's, you, you read that and go, what is he talking about here? Sin leading to death. What, what, what's that all about? Um, well, there's two things. One, what do we do with a, when we see a brother or sister that's sinning? Well, God's sakes, folks, we pray for them. That's what we do. We pray for them. We wrap arms around them. We pray for them. Whether they receive it or not, whether they change or not, that's not your work. Your work is to pray for them. Your work is to love them. Your work is to bring them alongside you, not to talk smack about them. Post it on the internet. Call your family members up and talk about it. You need to pray for them. You're in sin if you do that, by the way. If you're, if you're gossiping about them. You're in sin. That's sin. John's saying, look, you, your brothers or sisters, listen, all of us have issues. <laughs> we, all, we all do. We all have sins we struggle with. But we're to pray for one another. Pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And then if you notice, it says here with a capital H-E, he... he he will give him life. Jesus will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. There are sins that, they're, that lead to death. They're, 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 he's talking about the physical, not the spiritual. Okay? The physical, not the spiritual. Listen, I have a heart for drug addicts. Okay? Alcoholics. Because I know because I've been there. But the saddest thing to me is, is when I see, I, 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 I see somebody who is on heroin and they've gone to rehab for a year, and you love them to death, and they're walking with the Lord, and they've given their lives to Christ, and they're struggling. They're just having a hard time. That's what drugs do. It's a horrible, horrible addiction. Alcohol, too. Well, no matter what it is. Prescription drugs. And it gets a hold of people. And the next thing you know, that person slams another needle in their arm, and they did the same amount they did a year ago when they, were, when they, when they went to rehab, and their body, you know what? They die. It's just a reality. They die. They're, they're, you know what? They just die. They're, you know, you, you can, you, you go ahead and play with drugs. You're going to die. Alcohol, you're going to die. You know, um, you can live a crazy life. You, you can say you're saved and you live a crazy life. You're, you're going to, God's just going to take you out. There are sins that will lead to death. It's the way it is. I mean, well, where, where is that scripturally? Well, Look at 1 Corinthians. Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Uh, 
about their communion. They were taking, now communion for the Corinthians was a little bit different. They had a potluck. They had, they had, they had a meal. They had, everybody brought some food and then they ate and they, they fellowshiped and then they, they partook of the Lord's, the Lord's body, the blood and the, and the bread. But you know what they were doing? There were people that were less fortunate. It, there was people that were maybe on lower, lower caste system. They were maybe a little bit poorer than the rest. So when it came time to eat the food, they were judging those people saying, you can't eat any of that. You eat over on this table. You eat this stuff. You, you can't eat that. They were, they, were, they were judgmental of people. And you know what Paul said? He says the reason why you're sick and you're dying is because you're partaking of the Lord's Supper with the wrong heart and wrong attitude and you're taking it in vain. And they were dying. <laughs> they were dying. That's scriptural. You want to hear, you want to hear another one? Ananias and Sapphira. <laughs> Great people. Good people. But they had a piece of property. They sold it. And they were supposed to give back to God the portion that they were supposed to give back. So to kind of wiggle their way out of it, they told Paul and they said, oh, we only sold it for this amount of money. <laughs> they cheated the Lord of his portion. And you know what Paul said? Paul said, Ananias, because the Holy Spirit revealed it to Paul. Said, why are you, why are you lying about the, 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 you sold the land for a certain piece of, for a certain amount of money, and now you're lying to the Holy Spirit. You're not lying to man, you're lying to God, and you've only given back that. So God struck him dead, cheating on his tithe. Boy, I wonder how many of us would be left. <laughs> you know, how many of us would be left if that was the case today? You know, I mean, and then, so then, you know, poor guy cheated his tithe and he's dead on the ground. Well, guess what? His wife comes in and, of course, they already carried him out. It says in the book of Acts chapter 5, they already carried him out. And they said, Sapphira, what is this? This property you sold. You sold it for this amount. She said, yeah. She, they said, Sapphira, you're, li you're lying. You're not lying to me. You're lying to God. She lied too. <laughs> Down she goes. Yeah. I was just like, wow. There is sin leading to death. It's scriptural. You know, thank God we live in the dispensation of grace, isn't it? Goodness sakes. God is so, God is so good to us. He's so good to us. We don't even, we can't even understand it. I am more blessed than I deserve. More blessed than I deserve. So, they're, they're just, um, you know, you, you look at these, a verse like that and you go, what is, what is he talking about? You know, there, there are sins that people continue to do. And when God says he's, do, he's done with it, he's like, he's done with it. You're dead. It's going to happen. You can relate it to whatever you want to. Don't go write in a doctrine about it. <laughs> you know, don't go try to write a doctrine, that, you know, on, on this thing. It's just, it, you, you have it scripturally. You see it. John's, John's saying it. There are, there are those believers that, you know what, that God takes out. It's interesting, there was an, there's another verse in um, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 5 um, where Paul writes and says, five, I think it's 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, 5-5. Five, five. Talking about um, a believer here. Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, talking about a hard prayer. You know? 
Lord, deliver him to Satan that, you know, take him out, that his, that his soul be saved. That's a, pretty, that's a pretty intense prayer, don't you think? You know, when, when John says here, I do not say that, back in First John, he says, I do not say that you should pray about that. In other words, God's working a work in, the, in, the, in people's lives. You know, not saying, look, at God's working out his perfect will in our lives. So there's no sense in praying about that. Just pray God works out his perfect will in their lives. That's what he's saying. And all unrighteousness is sin, and, there's, and there is sin not leading to death. Because here we are today. <laughs> there is sin not leading to death. Every single one of you in here has sin in your life, and you're not dead. <laughs> you're alive, right? And, and thank God for the cross. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for his blood, right? And then John closes this, reminding us of who we are in Christ. Listen, don't, you, don't, you don't need to continue on in this sin, you know, but here you are. We know, do you know this morning? We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Now you read that and go, wait a minute. What did we all have sin, you just said. So if, if we're born again, we don't sin. Well, when you look at everything in this grammatically, and you look at what John is talking about, he's talking about practicing sin. None of us as Christians get up in the morning and say, today I'm going to practice sin. You know, I'm going to get up and practice this. I'm going to get up and practice that. We're born again. We're new creatures in Christ. We want to live our lives for God. We want to live our lives for Jesus. We want to do the right thing. Do we always do the right thing? No. We, we sin. That's why when we went through Romans, it said, you know what? We have an advocate. So whoever does sin, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, because we sin. So when you read that, you don't misinterpret it, but we're born of, we're born of God. And, and we, we don't practice sin. But he who is born of God keeps himself. We keep ourselves. We, I, I keep close to Jesus. I keep close to his word. I keep, I keep short accounts with God. When I mess up, I keep short accounts. I ask God to forgive me. I just keep, that's part of my relationship. It has nothing to do with my salvation. <laughs> it's part of my relationship. I'm saved. I'm a believer. But I have a relationship with my Savior. And you know what? And he knows me way better than any of you, my wife and my kids or anything else. He knows me inside and out. So I got to keep short accounts. <laughs> short accounts. Because that's part of my relationship with him. And um, John goes on here and says, Whoever is born of, God, born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. Isn't that good news? The wicked one is Satan. Satan wants to, to rob, kill, and destroy us. He wants to ruin your life, destroy your life, ruin everything about your life. But you know what? When we are in this relationship with God, the wicked one, he says, does not touch him. In other words, we see from Scripture that Satan has to ask God permission to do anything in your life. He has to go to God and ask him to mess with your life. Jesus, right, told Peter, Satan has asked for you. He wants to sift you as wheat. He wanted to sift all the disciples as wheat. He wanted to destroy them all. But Jesus said, but I'm praying for you. You know? Read John chapter 17, the great, the great priestly prayer of Christ. That we, this desire for us to be one in him. One in the Father. One in the Holy Spirit. That we are one as you are one. You know, God protected Jesus from all that. And this is the relationship that Jesus wants to have with us. The wicked one. Isn't that good to know? The wicked one cannot even touch you. Cannot touch you. We blame too much on the devil. <laughs> we, it's, it's our own doing most of the time. And then John says, we know that we are of God. Do you know that? Do you know that we are of God? We are of God. And the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. The whole world. You can see it on every news channel. You can see it in the White House. You can see it in third world countries. You can see it all over the world. The world is under the sway of the wicked one. Wow. 
And we know, notice all these we knows, we know, you know. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding. Understanding. Do you understand this? Now, what's, you know what? If the election doesn't go your way, I wonder what, what your rebuttal is going to be. <laughs> there you go. God will still be in control. See, that, you know what? That, that's, he, God has given us understanding. His will is going to be done, folks. Either the church is going to wake up or, or the church is going to be gone. And the seven-year tribulation is going to take place. You know, there's all kinds of things. But his will is going to be done. Do you know that? Do you understand that? He's given you understanding in his word. Understanding that we may know him who is true. So if you want to know what absolute truth is, it's right here. Right here in this book. You'll know him that is true. And we are in him who is true. In his son, Jesus Christ. And this. This. Look at what John says. Is the true God. And eternal life. Who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The true God. Eternal life. So that's scripture right there. Jesus isn't God. Where does it say that? Well, not only does the Bible say it. Jesus said it. And here we have it in John. His son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And then he closes and he says, little children. I like this. You know, a dad talking to his kids. Don't. When I get home, <laughs> when I get home, you better, when I get home, you better not. You know, he says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. And you want to know what our biggest idol is? Us. Us. We are the biggest idol we have. Keep yourselves from idols. And if you know anything about idols, you know, you, you whatever you're, you're worshiping is an idol. And if it's all about you, and it's all about you, and it's all about you, you're an idol. I know there's lots of different idols, but we always use excuses, don't we? Well, I don't have a lot of money, so money's not my idol. Oh, um, I don't have a good title, so my, you know, it's not, a, you know. But in all reality, you do what you do. You do what you do because you want to do it. You are the idol. And I say, die to the idol. <laughs> Live for Christ. Live for Christ. And know that you know that you are, you are a child of God. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for this morning. And we thank you for your word. And God, I, I, I just pray right now, Lord, for those who, who might want to respond to your word this morning. I know we've all heard many of scriptures and but God this morning there just might be those who just say I need to surrender my life to the Lord. I'm the biggest idol. And so if you want to surrender your life to the Lord this morning just stand up right where you're at and I'll pray for you. Anybody at all? Praise the Lord. Father God, I thank you so much for this wonderful sister, God, who's just standing right now, Lord. She's just given her life to you, God. And you know all about her. And uh, you love her so much, God. And so, Father, I just pray for your abundant blessings to be upon her. Lord, and um, Lord, the, the journey of the Christian life, God, is, is an amazing thing. And it's not always easy. It can be very difficult at times. But Lord, you are the way maker. You make a way. 
You're a miracle worker. And Lord, you're a promise keeper. And you keep all your promises, Lord. And this young lady, Lord, she is your child. And you love her. So God, um, make a way for her, God. I thank you for her. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's all stand up, church, for this last song. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. So that you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. I dare to pray from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Thank you for speaking to us this morning, God. Would we retain it, Lord, and would we just be overflowing with your spirit, God? Give us your power to live in the way that you would have us, God. In your name, amen.